Hi everyone, Sajid Amit here and welcome to my review of the Fat Frequency Maestro Mini or rather Fat Freak Maestro Mini in short. Very interesting brand from Singapore, a boutique brand that I happened to chance upon and I had a lovely conversation with the guys behind Fat Freak, especially Ben. A shout out to you, Ben. So I met these guys at CanJam Singapore. I tried all their IMs from the starting point, the entry level maestro mini to the maestro to all the way to the grand maestro and i really liked all their ims guys so i wanted to get one in and share my views and in a strange way this is the im that resonated with me the most in their entire collection although i do have to say that i haven't spent as much time with the grand maestro um, but in any case without further ado because some of you might not be very acquainted with the brand let me just give you a brief background about fat freak as mentioned on their website. So founded in 2016 by engineers Aaron and Ben, FatFree began as a service provider for IM repair and modifications. They have technical experience in the circuitry, acoustics, and driver configurations for over 20 IM brands. So FatFree quickly became the go-to place for IM rescue and restoration works. However, that was the past. Fat Frequency is now one of the leading IM companies in Singapore, without a doubt. To see the hype and lineup and just a crowd around their boots who tried their IMs in Singapore was just a sight to behold. They do have IMs at various price points, and honestly, I'm very impressed with the brand. This guy over here, I think, basically was the project to create a monitor that basically could give you the, you know, the performance or close to the performance of the Maestro and the Grand Maestro at the lowest possible costs. And the standard features of this IM essentially are threefold. A, they have a 20 dB base shelf. Kid you not, 20 decibel base shelf. Does that bleed into the mids? Does it sound overpowering, overwhelming, what have you? Stay tuned and I'll cover all of that. It has a 7 dB pin again, so it's not an IM that has very distant mids at all. It is not an IM that just does bass well. Stay tuned, I'll cover that as well. And finally, it has decent treble extension. And yes, we will talk about that as well, of course. Proprietary bass chamber as well. So all that is very impressive about this IEM. I'll start with accessories and all that, right? So this is what it comes with. They call it a fat box for some reason. It's not very fat. It looks like a Pelican case with, you know, these cardboard cutouts. Uh, or rather these foam cutouts, I'm sorry, with, within which to put your IM. This is a desiccant, which is great if you're in a human environment because it, this will keep your IM, uh, uh, you know, dry. A cleaning tool, of course, as you can see, extra ear tips. So this is pretty handy and, you know, it closes just the way a Pelican, a pelican case would. Um, and, you know, you can put your name on this uh, lid, of course. So that's that, pretty minimal. A two pin cable, of course, that comes with the IM uh, and the cable is fine. I have no issues with the cable. I've worn it for I've worn this IM for hours. And another thing to note about the ergonomics of this IM is that it is very ergonomic. I like how ergonomic it is. And that mostly comes from the fact that it's very, very small and it fits my ears perfectly. And I can wear this for hours on an end. And I have worn these on an hour for hours. And the best part, guys, I mean, other than this beautiful uh, uh, sort of uh, aesthetics on the shelves, which I'm not sure if you can see with, uh, with the camera, but other than the beautiful aesthetics, these are very small and they fit very snugly. And you can wear them to sleep and lie on your side, which is a huge thing for me, especially if you are like me and have a lot of expensive IMs. You still might want this because you can wear this to sleep. You can just lie on your side and wear them. And as is the case with IMs, like the difference between an IM that's in the $500 range, which is the case for this one, this is priced at 600 Singapore dollars. I think that's around 450 US dollars. Uh, so the difference between an IM that's priced at this price point and an IM that's like in the realm of 2000 or $3,000, technically speaking, is noticeable, but it is not massive. So you could well still own this and just have this for, you know, daily uses or you can wear them to sleep. But again, for a lot of you, of course, if for those of you looking for a budget of around $500, this would be an amazing buy. But more on that later. 
All right. Now, I do want to talk about the sound and firstly the frequency response and um, the tuning. So the frequency response, guys, is essentially another take on neutral with the sub bass boost. So that's what it sounds like, neutral with the sub bass boost. The sub bass boost is almost entirely in the sort of, you know, sub bass. So it's not in the mid bass, which is nice because that means that there's no bass clouding effect or no bass bleed into the mids, which works rather well for me. Um, and it does not interfere with the clarity basically, right? So the, that leaves the mid range very, very clean and clear but never lean. So it's clean, but not lean, the mid-range. It's A tier mid-range, A plus tier, I might even say. Female vocal sound, phenomenal. Male vocal sound, pretty decent as well. There's pin again, like I talked about, almost seven dB of pin again. And uh, there's a peak around 4K, and that does help because it does bring on the vocals a bit more and balance with the sub bass. Guys, I've seen this kind of tuning before. When you have a massive sub bass boost, a sub bass shelf and you have upper mid gain to balance the sub bass. I've seen this in one of my favorite IMs, the Empire Ears Legend Evo. Now, for whatever reason, I think the Legend Evo sort of lost out in, in its tuning because of the absence of air frequencies, which affected the, the sort of the treble extension and not just the treble extension, but I think it affected the timbre of Legend Evo. The Legend Evo is still an amazing IM and I'll still put it in my top 10. But I dare say this is a better tune I am than the Legend Evo because this has better treble extension. You have some energy around 8K, which does not sound sibilant. It is just what makes the treble present and it adds excitement to the sound. So you hear cymbal crashes the way you ought to. It also has a fair amount of extension from 10K all the way up to, let's say, around 14K. And that's just very welcome. Because in my experience, IMs that have a bass boost, if they can tune their IMs to also have an air frequency uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, presence. The timbre is heavily benefited, and as is the case here, because the Maestro Mini does have one of the best timbres I've heard in this price point. It sounds very natural, guys, is basically what I'm trying to say. So not just in sub-bass boost, which is just lovely, because you hear drums, you feel drums. Drum just sounds sometimes like rifle shots. And so there's so much bass depth, right? So you can feel the depth of the drums, and it's just... Very exciting. One of the best IMs I've heard ever for drums. Mid-range, like I said, is just nicely done. It's not dry or wet. It's not recessed or forward. It's just right. Treble is present, and air frequencies that prevail in this IM are just wonderful to listen to because it does offer the sort of airiness in, in vocals, the airiness around instruments, strings just come alive, and does sound more natural, like I keep saying. Tuning wise, guys, this is perhaps the best tune I am that I've heard with the sub bass boost. Yes, there are other IMs that have a sub bass boost and try to sound neutral, from Symphonium Helios, which I really, really like, to all the way to uh, the T Audio Monarch, Mark One, Mark Two Clairvoyance, and so many others have tried this neutral with sub bass boost sort of presentation. And whereas the T Audio IMs do have more technical performance, they are more expensive. This, I think, has better tonality, I dare say, and timbre even, than the T-Audio IMs. So that's it for tonality, guys. Technical performance is basically where I think this is quite impressive because it's a lot better than a lot of the Chai-Fi competition it has at this price point. In fact, it is definitively better than the Moondraw variations for me in terms of technical performance. I mean, it, this does not need a whole lot of energy to power up, but I was using this with high-end sources like the... Sony W01 ZM2, which is my favorite DAP. I've tried this even with the Hugo 2, which is an expensive source. And it just sounds amazing. I do think you get more resolution once you pair this with better sources. But that's true for every IM almost. Uh, but I was impressed with the fact that it scales with expensive sources. So this, in that, I think could cater to both collectors who want this and they still have very expensive IMs. This could also very well cater to those that have a price point or a budget in mind of no more than $500. So resolution is particularly impressive for this price point. I hear nuances, I hear micro details, I hear a lot of finer things in a track that I think I often associate with more expensive IMs. So trailing edge of notes, fingers strumming across guitar strings, you hear all that. 
The base resolution is particularly impressive because you do hear a lot of the after effect of, you know, bass guitars, drums, a lot of finer textural elements to these bass oriented instruments. And overall, it does not disappoint for resolution. The treble extension means the treble is also fairly detailed, and that does sound wonderful. Soundstage is particularly impressive, especially imaging, because on an IM, in an IM of this price point, I do not expect to hear very well separated instruments, but I do in this case. Of course, it does not rival an Empire Ears Odin, which is far more expensive at $3,000 and often my benchmark for imaging, but it does do fair fairly well for this price point. Imaging is quite solid. Zero veil or masking effect anywhere. You can locate instruments on the stage with a lot of ease. Dynamics is a particular strong suit of this IM because it's fairly punchy, dynamic, and if you like rock or EDM or trip hop, and any genre that tokens or requires dynamics to come alive, yes, this would be your jam. I do highly recommend this for rock, and I'm a big aficionado of rock music myself, so this was wonderful for me, and I really, really like it, and I often find myself listening to this for rock ahead of other more expensive IMs that I own. And finally, timbre I've already talked about, and it's just quite natural sounding. Nothing wrong with the timbre here, which is not what I can say about the Moondrop variations and other chi fi competition at this price point. So that's it, guys. It's a very well-tuned IM despite having this massive sub-bass boost. It has a nice mid-range despite having a massive sub-bass boost. The massive sub-bass boost will please bass heads. Yes, it is a bass head IM, but because it is so well-tuned outside of sub-bass, it will please, I honestly think, a lot of other people if not everyone. If you have further questions about this IM, do get in touch with me and I would love to engage you in the comments or elsewhere. I'm Sajid Amit on Headfire as well. I hope to see you in my next one. Take care. Bye-bye.